something supernatural is about to happen. Y'all aware of it? Something supernatural is about to happen. God is about to release revelation that will bring transformation. But you have to receive it. Amen. And so we let God know we're ready to receive by shouting hallelujah and sending it around the world. Let's go ahead and shout this hallelujah and let's do so with power. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Go ahead and clap for the Lord. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 118, verse 24. Amen. I'm glad in this day. Then you can add verse 25. I beseech thee, O Lord, send now prosperity. Amen. How I many of y'all want prosperity now? I want it too. Amen. And God's sending it to us. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray before we get into the word. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for blessing us, blessing us to be here this morning. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Look at your neighbor say, get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. All right. So we've been preaching this series here for Sundays entitled The Open Door. And we're going to preach the open door part six. How many believe some good opportunities are there for you? Amen. 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 That there are some new things God's bringing your way. Amen. Are you excited about receiving it? Yes. You know, last week we preached uh, the subtitle of, of our series that we preached last week was uh, having a mind to receive because if you don't think you're worthy, then how many know you won't be? Now, it's not that God doesn't see you as worthy. It's just you don't have the mindset to receive it. And so we have to be renewed in our minds so that we can receive. I am what God, I'm, I'm who God said I am. I'm not going to argue with him. And I'm going to go ahead and receive everything that God has for me. God has wonderful things in store for you. And I believe that this is our time to receive it. Go to Revelation 3.8, Revelation 3.8 in the King James. Let's look at that. This has been our cornerstone scripture for this series, but just go ahead and take a look at it and, and let God minister to you through his word. The word of God here says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. And so what does this mean? We've been, we're up to message six. What does this mean to you guys? Okay, I'll tell you what it means to me. God's been watching me. See, most of the time people say God's been watching me. They're like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. No, no, no. I want God to watch me. I want God to see what I'm doing. Amen? See, this is not about, listen, if we realize that it's a waste of time to keep staying in a lifestyle or a situation that's causing you to go against God, that's a waste of time. It's much better for you to get in perfect alignment with God and then say, you, you see me, don't you, Lord? Now, we don't need to have everybody else see us. Amen. See, that's the problem. See, Satan is, we'll talk about this, he's a master deceiver, and he deceives people to focus on things that really don't matter. And so people start getting all upset about, well, um, they didn't say, it. I mean, you know, man, I did all of this, and nobody said that I did a good job. I mean, I didn't even get a thank you. Come on, y'all been there? I, I seem like I'm unappreciated. But God says, I know thy works. So you catch a revelation of this that, oh, God's watching me. So if God's watching me, I, mm, I'm really not worried about what somebody else says because how many know the accolades that you can provide for me are pale in comparison to what my God can give me? So I'm going to live this life, this life that I have, I'm going to live it to please one. Amen. And I'm going to please him with every day he gives me. And so Jesus is saying here, I know thy works and behold, I have set before thee an open door. Now, we've covered this, but what do you do 
to open doors? Like, do you knock? Do you go look for a key? No, you just walk right in. And so he says, I've set before thee an open door, and here it is. No man, look at your neighbor and say, no man. No man. Look back and say, that includes woman. Can't nobody stop what God has for you. Let me just tell you that. They could say all they want to say about you, but they can't stop him. And all you got to do is make sure that you're with him and you're paying more attention to him than them. Because he says, I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it. Nobody can stop it. You know, there's this victim mentality. That if you're not careful, you don't watch out with who you hang out with, that thing will get on you. Everybody got a yeah, but to why they can't do something. Well, I would do this, but you know, um, you know, but my supervisor, what he got to do with you? Well, I work for him. No, you don't. You need to catch a revelation of the word. You work for God. Jesus said, I know your works. You don't work for, listen, you might be at a job, but let me just help you understand. Now, this is not to cause you to go into some situation where you don't recognize authority. I'm not telling you that. We're supposed to respect authority. And if you have a supervisor and you know you respect them and honor, you give honor to who honor is due. But the thing is, is they can't stop you. They cannot stop you. They cannot hinder your progress that God has for you. Because they don't say, I have set an open door. Who said that to you? Just in case y'all didn't know, um, I have the red letter edition. And so when it's red, that means Jesus said it. So it's not like, oh, well, you know, that's up for interpretation. You know, interpretation, that's what God said. And so we just simply believe it. Do we believe it? Okay, so I'm not going to be disappointed by man and what man is not doing or doing. Or I'm not going to get overly excited. Here's another thing. I got to move on from this, but here's another thing. Don't get overly excited about man if he does something for you. God, I did you, you know, I just, I just owe you my life. You don't owe him your life. Your life, don't you can't. Matter of fact, if you owe somebody your life, you can't pay him. That's a cold thing when you owe somebody and can't pay him. Because your life belongs to him now. So you don't have a life to give to nobody. It's his life. It, he owns you. And so you need to be a person that is more excited, glory to God, about him and pleasing him and then have your expectations be based on him. Now, he says, I have said before thee an open door and no man can shut it, for thou hast had a little strength. We've talked about this. Sometimes we get weary. You can get weary in well-doing, right? Sometimes you're believing, but it seems like it's taking so long and you get a little tired and you're like, oh, Lord. But don't give up. And so that's what this is saying. He says, you have had little strength, but you have kept my word. How many of y'all been doing that? How many of y'all been keeping the word? Come on, somebody. Some people, they get depressed and go, they go eat ice cream. They say, oh, I'm depressed. I'm going to get a gallon. Oh, that ice cream, man, you're going to have gas now. You got gas. You, you, come on, you're depressed and your stomach's bubbling. Ain't it? It's not helped you, amen? But what if you went and got that word? Say, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that word. And come on. You are reading the word, but the word will read you. And so what this is saying is you have kept my word and you have not denied my name. Let us be a people that live this way in the earth. Let us be a church that lives this way in the earth, that we will not deny the name of Jesus. I'm not going to turn on Jesus. I'm not going to, I don't care what they say I have to do. I'm not turning on my Jesus. And I'm not about to just pray some little old sweet prayer without Jesus. If I can't put the name of Jesus in it, don't ever ask me to pray. Because my prayer has zero power without the name. Amen. And so when we have this, we have a revelation. We've been preaching it for six weeks. Man, you ought to start to expect some stuff. Now, today I'm preaching the Open Door Part 6. The subtitle of today's message is Speak It. Speak It. 
Man, I remember when me and my wife really first came into, you know, the, the word of faith and, you know, learning about the power of God and speaking things. We got a, a license plate on our car. It says, speak it. Yeah, we had that. That's a nice, you know, back then, it was years ago, we had us a nice black sequoia with some rims on it and all that. <laughs> Speak it on the license plate. We believed in that stuff, and we still do. But we caught a hold of it. I'm like, wow. And so the thing is, is if you believe it, we'll put a focus on this. Now, I can preach over and over and over and over and over, and I can say all these scriptures and all this stuff, but the question is, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe that God has divine opportunities open for you? Do you believe that God's going to open up doors for you that no man can shut? Do you believe that God's going to bless you with favor and prosperity and abundant health, and he's going to deliver you from every situation that can ever come against you? Do you believe it? Do you believe that God has your best interests at hand? And that all things, come on somebody, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those of us who love God and those of us who are called according to his purpose. Do you believe that? Amen. Well, what if it don't look like it's working out? I'm going to tell you something. You got the power. Come on, somebody just go like this. You don't have to, your hands might be dirty, so you don't have to touch your face. <laughs> but just go like this. Just go on up there and say, come on, I got the power. Right here. right here. See, you got the power to change any situation. Right there. You ain't got to wait for it to be voted on. Come on, somebody. You don't have to wait for them to legislate it. No, I got the power, and it's God-given. And if God gave it to me, man can't take it away. Amen. So if you believe it, then speak it. We're talking all this open doors. Well, have you been talking about your next status? Yes. Any of y'all been talking about your next opportunity? Come on. Any of y'all been talking about the income you want to got I me? Mean, right. Come on, somebody. Any of y'all been talking about whatever it is? Yes. Have you been talking about it? Right. Or have you been talking about what they're talking about? If you don't want what they're talking about, stop talking about what they're talking about. Right. Y'all with me? Yes. If you don't want that, then stop talking about it. That's why I don't repeat it. Some can consider me, well, you know, you just kind of, man, you got to know some stuff. No, I don't need to know all that. I'm not as advanced as you. See, because I'm not, I'm not wired like that. I can't watch a bunch of junk on TV and the news and it not impact me. I don't have that kind of maturity that you all have. So that's why I don't really click on all the news articles. I don't do it because I don't have that ability. Plus, I don't have enough time. Why? Oh, because I'm in the Word. So I, I'm busy focusing on the good news, so I really don't know much about fake news. I just heard them say it's fake news, but I don't really know what they're talking about. <laughs> because I'm in here. Amen? Amen? And so, if you believe it, then speak it. Speak what? Speak opportunities. Huh? Come on, speak your opportunities. Yeah. Man, glory to God. If you want a, a promotion, what you just over there waiting with? If it's the large whale. He just might, maybe. No, how about you? I'm going to get into the scripture, but you better start decreeing a thing. Glory to God. God has given you the power to create what you want. He's giving, glory to God. You can speak to your own body and command it to be made whole. Man, the woman that had the issue of blood in Matthew chapter 9, she had it for 12 years but then she said within herself, glory to God. So she had to have a conversation. Some of y'all might need to have a conversation with yourself. Come on, some of y'all might need to put yourself in check and stop blaming the devil because the biggest opposition you face is you. He don't have to fight you. He, has, he just has to brainwash you. If he brainwashes you, you'll destroy yourself. Doors will be open all around you, and you'll be going and looking for the one that's closed. 
God got doors open all, I mean, you got this five doors open. You're like, I know one's closed. I'm going to go over here and I'm kicking and beating. You beating on the one that's closed. Amen? That ought not be. Speak opportunities. Speak increase. What y'all think I'm speaking over this church? I'm speaking, but I'm not just, I'm speaking this global. I'm putting out a global confession, man. And listen, I can call a nation that I don't even know. And nations that don't even know me shall run to me. I can speak that according to the law, the word of God. And every devil in hell has to bow to it. Isaiah 55, 5. Amen. I can speak that. And what is five? Five is the number of grace. So I, God has given me the grace to speak that. Amen. Come on, just put that up real quick. A bonus scripture. Isaiah 55, 5. Thank you. Put it in the uh, King James. I'm trying to encourage you, man, to start speaking your way into your next season. Behold, thou shalt call a nation. See that? That's, yeah. That's why we're doing all this stuff. This stuff is going out globally, man. I keep telling you guys, some people don't believe me, but I keep telling you, we got people from other countries. And it's, it's just barely getting started, but it's, and they like communicating, and, and you know, and I know, come on somebody, they are not like in America from Africa. No, they in Africa. You know what I mean? They're not, Come on, because we got a lot of people in America that are from somewhere else. Like, we got people in India that follow us that are not in America from India. India. They are in India right now. You see what I mean? This is global. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. Me and my wife went to India. We didn't know that nation. We didn't know nothing about it. But yet we had the power, come on somebody, we had the power to lay hands and prophesy and speak a new destiny, glory to God. We had the power to be used by God to speak somebody out of Hinduism, come on somebody, into Christianity. We had the power, the authority, the delegated authority to touch the world. Some people are still going to church. Let's see if I go to church today. No, we are the church, and we're here to make a difference to impact the entire world. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel for what? He has glorified thee. So what's going on in the world? A lot of darkness, huh? A lot of darkness. You know what it's time for you to do? Come on, I'm going off script. I gave them my scriptures, but go over to Isaiah uh, 60, 60 verse 1 in the King James. This is what it's time for you to do. Huh? Let me get that in the King James. Come on, somebody. What's that mean to you? It's time for you to rise up. Oh, well, but, you know, things seem to be getting worse. Not for me. Glory to God, he'll keep me alive in famine. Millionaires are made in famine. Somebody got to get it. Come on, I receive it. I'll be the one to get it, amen? Come on, somebody's got to get it, but you know the ones that's getting it is the ones that's speaking it. And so he says, arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord, what? Is risen upon you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you carry around the glory of God on you? Or are you still trying to apologize for cussing folks out? So we ain't got time for all that. Amen? God is looking for some leaders that will step up. Next verse. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. We got that? I mean what? I mean, I'd say we didn't enter into a pretty dark stage of life when they're talking about aborting babies. Well, it's not even abortion. I mean, abortion is bad, period. But, I mean, they have advanced the whole thing like, okay, the baby can be born. And then, you know, well, we'll keep the baby comfortable until the mama and the doctor decide what to do with the baby. 
What do you mean what to do? Like adoption? No, no, no. If they want to kill it. What? So would we say darkness is in the earth? But let me tell you something. This ain't going to change because you complain about it. This is going to change because you speak something new. Y'all with me? We're the agents of change in the earth, and we're the ones with the power. Go over to God. We can shut those laws down. We can turn them with our words. So gross darkness shall cover the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon who? This whole world is looking for somebody. Come on, somebody that's blessed. How many of y'all blessed? The world needs to see somebody that's blessed. Yes. Not talking about, I'm blessed and highly favored, but they just saying it cliche. Right. Like, no, you are really blessed. Yes. Come on, this is all born. I just got to obey the Holy Ghost. Stay in that. Well, actually go up to Isaiah 61. Go to verse 9, King James. If you don't know your word, you better learn it. Yes. The time is upon us. See, they don't preach enough word in churches. They spend all the time, uh, you know, just do, singing and going to activities. And, and everybody's still struggling. But if we get the word, we'll get our victory. Okay. Isaiah 61, 9. And their offspring, come on, this is talking about our offspring. We are spiritual Israel. We're grafted in through Jesus so we can claim this. And so, and their seed, so that's the offspring, their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. And all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. How many of y'all want that to be? I'm talking about people going around, ooh, yep, there, mm -hmm, see that one? Yep, he wanted, ooh, glory to God. You sure are blessed. I mean, my, wow. You know, and then we won't have to do all of this stuff, trying to, you know, twist people's arms and trying to, you know, convince them. And, you know, sometimes you can't even have a conversation with somebody. If Listen, if you're having a conversation with somebody and you got to tell them, well, you know I'm a Christian. Well, you know what? Your game is messed up. Let me just be the one to say it. I ain't never had no conversation with nobody and say, well, you know, I'm a Christian. They're supposed to see it. They're supposed to tell me, well, I believe you're a Christian. <laughs> you're right. Or they, they should be able to say, you know, I believe you're blessed. Because this is how you will get the Muslims' attention. Can I get amen right there? This is how you will get the Hindus' attention. I mean, you're not going to get their attention by arguing and debating with them. You're going to get their attention because the blessing is visible and you have something that they've been looking for and they didn't know what it was and then they see it on you and then all of a sudden they say, well, what is that? Y'all with me? I know I, I, I remember a story from my pastor. He went to Fiji and they had a powerful crusade down there and there was a Muslim man who was, uh, I believe, the bus driver. Were they, you know, just being nice to him? Didn't try to, like, convert him? That's Christians, you know. I'm like, you know, we got to convert him. We got to get him, you know. You know, you know, she's a Muslim. And you'd be over there in your lab, like, oh, lining up my scripture, man. I'm going to get it all together. I'm lining up my scripture. They didn't do that. They just walked in the blessing. Amen. And so it came down to where, you know, my pastor decided that they wanted to bless the bus driver. They said, you know what? We want to bless you. And uh, would you mind if we, you know, and, and it's out there. It's okay to, you know, they kind of go to people's houses and stuff like that. He said, would you mind if we, uh, you know, we want to come over and bring you some dinner. Oh. Okay. So this man, now mind you, he's watching them. Watching what? Their behavior. See? See, that also impacts how people receive from you. See, they're going to check you out first. Oh, glory to God. You wonder why they don't want to hear what you got to say? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, they, they, they saw you on Monday. Mm -hmm. So they're not trying to be witnessed to by you on Friday. But if you just live it out and conduct yourself the way in a way that's becoming and um, pleasing to the Lord. Well, this is what they did, and guess what happened? They invited him. This man was like, well, sure. Well, they bought a bunch of 
they went, went out and bought a bunch of lobsters and all this kind of stuff. They had all this stuff, and they took them to this man's house, and they had a feast. And, you know, pastor back then, his team, you know, a lot of them was Samoan, so they had to have a lot of food anyway. I mean, just for somebody else to get some. I'm just saying, you know, you know how they eat. So they went over there, man, and just blessed this man. And do you know that this man and his whole house got saved? Receive Jesus as Lord. Glory to God. Turn from this uh, other religion that they were following. And even to this day, they still with Jesus. So they see something. How about they start seeing it on you? The question is, do you believe it? See, that's where the trouble is. Right there in the church. Do you believe it? You know, we get a lot of sermons and we preach a lot of stuff and we do all this stuff. But do we believe it? Well, if you believe it, then speak it. And so you ought to start speaking these opportunities, speak increase, speak your desires, what? Into existence. Speak your desires into existence. Go to Isaiah 65, 16. There it is. And let's put that up in the, uh, we got it in the Amplified. Thank you. Uh, so, it shall be that he who inverts a, invokes a blessing on himself in the land shall do so by what? Hmm? How are you going to bring the blessing to you? Well, you went, well, just a whatever the Lord's will is. Is that what this scripture says? He says, so it shall be that he who invokes a blessing on himself in the land shall do so by saying, may the God of truth and fidelity, the amen, bless me. And he who takes an oath in the land shall swear by the God of truth and faithfulness to his promise, the amen, because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hidden from my eyes Look at your name and say, my troubling days are gone. My troubling days are gone. I got nothing but blessings ahead now. But do you believe it? See, if you believe it, then you, come on, somebody, you'll stop talking. Oh, I ain't trying to get on you, man, but you're going to stop talking about that. You know, man, last few years been tough. We know, because that's all we've been hearing from you. But if you are willing to invoke a blessing on yourself, you're going to start speaking something else. Because you want something else. Huh? You want something else to come into your life. And so this word saying, it means communicating. It's speaking into the atmosphere. You can design your future with your words. What? You can design your future with your words. Y'all believe this works? This has worked in a negative way too. People have had stuff they spoke showed up on them. Mm -hmm. They didn't want it, but they spoke it and it showed up. Well, you have the power to design your future. But do you believe it? God gave it to you, but do you believe it? Now go over to Job 22. Job 22. Job 22, 28. So he says here, just in the King James first, then we'll look at the Amplified. He says, thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Let's look at it in the Amplified. You shall also decide. Now, here it is. We've been talking about it on Wednesday. If you be willing and obedient, Isaiah 119, you have a free will. Y'all with me? You can choose to obey God or not. Now, at one time, you know, soon, soon enough is coming to where, you know what, you're going to have to deal with the choices you made. 
but we're living in a time where we have a free will so I can decide. Now, how many of y'all going to decide today? I'm going to stay over here. It seems like it pops over there, huh? We, we still work. I, I'm decided in the name of Jesus that this mic is going to work. I've decided this. But, I, you know, I, I can't be stopped because I got, I got too much word that the world is waiting on. But how many of y'all going to decide that I'm not going for the closed door no more. Y'all, y'all going to decide that? Okay, how many of y'all going to say, God's got good stuff for me? Well, are, are you going to be stuck in that? Well, ain't nothing ever really happened. You know, my family, you know, nothing good ever comes our way. Guess what? You're keeping that tradition going. But you can be an agent of change. Come on, somebody, you can change for the next generation. I want my kids to be able to walk into something that I didn't have. But in order for them to walk into something that I didn't have, I'm going to have to speak something, glory to God, that wasn't being spoken back then. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, amen? How many know I'm getting the knowledge of the word? You keep coming to church, what you'll get is the knowledge of the word. And you start to realize the power that's really on the inside of you, and you can be a, come on, somebody, a generational chain breaker. Because Satan doesn't have anything new to use. He don't have nothing new. Most of the time people are dealing with something today. It was in the bloodline. And it's all set up. This is what's really cold about it. Is it set up for you to robotically walk into things that generations gone by walked in. The only thing that stops this is deliverance. You could have had... Uh, alcoholism in your bloodline and if you're, you don't get saved, glory to God you, you know, I just got a taste you know, I got a taste for it, I just didn't seem like I you don't know why you got that taste you got that taste because it's in your bloodline it's running through, it's running through, come on somebody I mean people even walk like somebody they never met but what happens is there's a demonic destiny set up for you there's a demonic destiny set up for you. And the only way out of that demonic destiny is to step in, come on somebody, into his presence, is to step into the fullness, yeah. is to receive Jesus as Lord. Right. The curse breaker must come to you. Amen. And you receive him and now what? You're delivered. I am no longer associated with that. So I can tell the devil that don't work. Amen. He's going down the bloodline. Blah, oh, everybody, everybody got this. Everybody got this. Boop. Wait, 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 let me do that over. Everybody got this. Everybody got this. Boop. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me try it again. Everybody got this. Everybody got this. Boop. Yeah, you found out it don't stick over here, huh, Satan? Huh? Come on, somebody. It don't, because now the devil is such this deceiver, he'll have you taking on some stuff. And what do they say? As if this makes you feel comfortable. Here go your, your well, you know, well, you know, your auntie, you know, she had that. And you know what? I, I believe your daddy's brother, uh, third cousin, had it too. So what, am I supposed to feel better about this now? I don't want this. But they're trying to get you to identify and associate. But if you're not careful, your behaviors, I, I just want to help you get this, because your behaviors, if they're not ordered by God, then you will habitually follow into a path. Come on, you'll develop bad habits, bad habits of eating, bad habits of living, bad habits of not taking care of yourself, and all of a sudden that's leading you right into the generational curse, and you can say that the curse is broken, but why come? how come you still got the same stuff they did? They was living at KFC and you lived there too. <laughs> Come on, I don't know why I got all this high blood pressure. I know why. <laughs> and the doctors say, this is hereditary. And then you ought to say, but I know I heard pastors say something about new DNA. Did Jesus have this? Come on, some of y'all go in your prayer closet and ask him, did Jesus have this? This thing is crazy, man. I've been seeing some stuff, I'm telling you. That, my eyes are wide open. And I see what the devil's doing. And I had to break that stuff. I got stuff going on on both sides of my family. My mom's side, my uncles, 
All of my uncles are gone. Done. I love my uncles. I talk to them, and they're, they're all gone, man. Not one of them ever even made it to 75. So y'all think that's coincidence? Hmm? Habits. Habits. Oh, fine. oh, heart disease. Oh, see? Huh? Heart disease, all that kind of stuff. And then it starts to add up. Well, what, what's the habits? You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I talked to my, uh, my last uncle that passed. I talked to his wife. Oh, man. I mean, my mom probably see this, but I didn't say. I was, man, I was a little like, what? I found out he was like, his favorite spot was like KFC. I'm like, brother, what is he doing? What was he doing over there? Battling, I'm talking about battling heart disease all these years. Like, let me just tell you guys something. I'm not trying to be super spiritual. But if you got some issues in regards to your health, you might want to just, like, evaluate what you're doing. Is that, is that too aggressive up in here? No. Anybody? Not at all. It, it, you just might want to evaluate that because... I'm going to tell you something. Let me just say this with all confidence. And I've said on camera in the devil's face, I got all this stuff on both sides of my family. It ain't on me. And it will not come on me. It has no power to stick on me. I'm not going up in there getting a prescription for nothing in the name of Jesus. But this ain't something I just started speaking yesterday. I've been speaking this stuff for years. And I've been teaching y'all to do the same thing. We'll stop making these excuses. If it's on both sides, how come pastor ain't got it? Hmm. Go listen to my CDs. Y'all think I'm preaching for you? For entertainment? I live this out, man. When we put that on our license plate, we believed it. I got a hold of that revelation and I believed it. So I don't say some of the stuff I hear people, I hear Christians say, I don't do that. It don't come out. I give my, you know, you're just being too rigid. No, no, I just like being blessed. Come on, somebody. I like getting up and everything works. That's just what I like. You can call me rigid. You can call me, well, you're just too. No, I just like, come on, somebody. I can still hoop if I want to. Glory to God. I like, you know, being able to see my shoes when I look down. Right. <laughs> You're just being too rough, Pastor. Yeah, uh-huh. See, I need somebody to step up so we can go ahead and take the land. Yes. We can't be, I'm not talking about taking the land. You're like, who, who, <laughs> Pastor? <laughs> Hold on, I need five minutes. I need five minutes. Let's work this out. Amen? Amen? Can we work it out? Okay, so it's a choice, right? You, saw all, you shall also do what? I'm still on that scripture. I haven't left. Job 22, 28, amplified. You shall what? Amplified. Come on. You shall also decide. Now, your decree is based on your decision. So you can't just robotically start thinking that you're going to start saying some stuff. That's like the hallelujah bunch at church or the amen corner. They be amen, but they ain't really deciding nothing. Amen. Do you know what I just said? No. What you say amen for? Amen means you agree. Amen? Y'all agree. But listen, you decide you shall also decide and then what? So I'm going to decree it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to decide and then I'm going to decree a thing. And then what's going to happen? It shall be established for you. And then, you know, what's going to happen is and the light of what? Ooh, let me, man, if, listen, you start, you decide, come on, somebody, if you decide you want to be promoted, 
let me just take it there. Because I know y'all, you know, y'all don't like when I start talking about health because, you know, he probably going to say something about the gym. <laughs> uh, ain't nobody got time to be going to no gym. So I'm going to get off of that. Amen. Y'all get on each other about your health. I'll get off of that. Let's talk about everybody's okay with money, though, right? Y'all, come on. Y'all, y'all not have no problem with money? We all in agreement? Amen? Okay. Well, you, if you decide that this year you're going to make more money than you made last year, if you decide that, I mean, we're still in February. It ain't too late. If you decide that, then guess what? You will decree it. What does that mean? Come on. Come on. So I decided it, so now my decree is based on my decision, and so now I'm walking around here talking about, I'm making way more money this year, glory to God, than I made last year. That's a decree. I just said it. Man, I got more than enough. I mean, money just keeps coming into me. It seems like I'm getting paid every day. I got people giving me money that I haven't even met yet. Huh? But you got to decide. Now, some people won't decide that because they're like, no, no, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. You comfortable? Well, cut us a million then. Can we just get one meal? Can you just cut us a check for a million? I mean, that's it. Just one meal with your comfortable self. Just bow. Put it towards the new building. Some of y'all ain't even decided you want to go to a new building because you don't even go on outreach or nothing. So you think we're going to get to a new building just by osmosis? I'm with you, Pastor. Well, come on, I'll reach. <laughs> this is Holy Ghost, man. Y'all didn't know this was coming? I'm on board. Praise God. But well, we need to get some people. Well, you get them, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. But everybody can use increase. So if you want that increase, then go ahead and speak it. But guess what? If you speak it, you decide it, now you speak it, here's what happens. Your words attract God's favor. Your words attract God's favor. So all of a sudden, you then put it out there, and then all of a sudden, just by you speaking it, your words attract God's favor, and now God is lining stuff up. All of a sudden, they want to give you a promotion. Come on, somebody at your job that you didn't ask for. I, I'm just up in here preaching. You didn't want to promote. You didn't even ask for it. You didn't even know what it was It was there, but somebody comes up and says, we got to give you, uh, we just got to change your title. I just, uh, you know what? We got to change your title. We're going to call you something else because, you know, we got to figure out a way to justify, come on, somebody, this money we're about to give you. Amen. We're talking about the open door. But do you believe it? There's no reason that you won't be in a better situation. You can step into that thing now. And not in this year with the pie in the sky. Come on, you didn't got it down. You'd have brought it down into your reality. Amen. But make a choice. Decide that that's what you want. And then what? Decree it. Speak it. So you're speaking it as though it's already done. Just put it out there and watch what God does. He, his favor will start to come about. And so, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon what? Huh? It's going to shine upon your ways. You know what? When the light of God's favor shines, you know what to do. You know where to go. Because his favor has been released. It's shining on you. The question is, do you believe it? Now, do you believe that you can speak your way into a new season? See, sometimes this stuff sounds like it's way out there. But do you believe, come on, if you just saved up some energy, because some of y'all waste a lot of energy complaining. If you just saved up that energy and say, I'm going to put this towards speaking what I want, then guess what? Some different things are going to show up. I'm telling you, they're going to manifest. They're going to manifest in your life. Now, here's the thing. We have to believe it. 2 Corinthians 4.13, King James, please. 
We got the spirit of God on the inside of us, and I'm telling you, we can speak this. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I have believed. See that? And therefore, I have what? So if you believe, what are you supposed to do? You can't just believe and don't speak. Huh? Well, I believe I'm healed. Well, how come you ain't telling nobody? Amen? Well, I, I, well, well, I believe that God supplies all my needs. Well, how come you're not telling anybody? If you believe, then you speak. If you don't speak, but none of us are going around here quiet all the time. We're saying something. And so it's really a matter of us figuring out what we believe. And I'm encouraging you to believe the word. Now, you were designed to speak what you believe. Did you know that? That that's how you're made. You're actually made to speak what you believe. You were never intended to say stuff you really don't believe. But Satan is the master deceiver. And now he's got people saying stuff they really don't believe. But we got to understand who we are. We're created in the image of God. We're created in the image of God. Genesis 127. Genesis 127 to amplify it. He says here, so God created man in his own image. In the image, in his, in the image and likeness of God, he created, created him male and female. He created them. And so what this means is that word likeness is exact duplicate of kind, meaning I'm created to be just like God. God even put his character in me. Now, there are some religious people out there to say, well, we can't, we, we can't say that. Well, look, you are filled with the spirit of God. Okay, how about this? Y'all believe the Bible is true? So you believe God, when he said he created man in his image, you believe that's you? And his likeness, so you have his character. You, you believe you, you have your char his character on the inside of you? Yeah. Well, how, are you, how do you know that this is true? 1 Corinthians 3.16. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Just take some notes on this. I'm going through them fast, but just write them down. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the spirit of God dwells where? Well, if I got his spirit, you think I might have his character? I mean, if his spirit's on the inside of me, I just might have his character, and I might even be able to act like him. I find it kind of strange that people are supposed to have the Holy Ghost and can't act like God. You're supposed to have the spirit of what the Lord told me. Okay, you ought to be acting just like him if you got him living in you. Is this, is this like extreme preaching? I mean, God, like, he says, I'm a... Come in there and dwell in. How many of y'all think you're strong enough to dominate God? You, you, God comes on and you say, well, you know, well, what you're going to do is you're going to get in the back room. You could stay here, but you stand in the back room because I run this. That's a lot of people saying they got God. I run this and they just doing what they want to do. They ain't doing what the Holy Ghost tells them. Amen. But know ye not that you are the temple of God. And that the spirit of God dwells in you. If I got the spirit of God dwelling in me, how, what am I going to be calling myself a filthy sinner for? If I got the spirit of the living God, I'm talking about the God of the universe. He done made himself an abode in me. How am I going to speak down on myself? Let's go to another one. 2 Corinthians 6.16. And what agreement. Now, this is where... Christians ought to be acting right. You all not, come on, somebody, look at your neighbor and say, you, you, don't be cussing no more. I'm just saying, I ain't all in your business, but, you know, don't be cussing no more. You got to quit cussing people out. You know what I'm saying? That ain't, that ain't going to fly. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? See, people worship their jobs. They worship their, come on, they worship their retirement. They worship their Cars, they worship all kinds of stuff. No idols, because God's living in you. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and what? So how come you act them right? Because God's walking in me. So when God says I'm gonna walk in you, that means He's gonna come in you and we're gonna do this right. You don't follow, I mean, He don't follow you. 
God ain't going even talking about where are we going today? What are we going to do? No, that's what you should say. He says that he's living in you and, and I'm going to dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. This is what he says. Now, once again, Satan is the master deceiver and he has tricked people into speaking more of what they don't believe rather than what they believe. Have you guys noticed how this happened? Come on, somebody. People speak more about what they really don't believe. How do we know they don't believe it? Yeah, they don't really want a lot of this stuff to happen. Like, for example, when they would tell somebody to, you know, they're getting ready to go do a performance or something, they say, well, go break a leg. And what do we say? All right. Like, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to break a leg. That's not encouraging me. But people say, oh, well, I didn't mean that. Well, listen. The demons don't know about what you mean. They know what you say. That's all they can do is hear. They don't have this ability to, well, I didn't know. Well, uh, you know what? I'm discerning their heart, that their heart was really pure. And No, they're taking that word as fuel, and they're going on it. Amen? Here's another one. People saying what they don't believe. Man, you scared me to death. Anybody ever heard that? Man, I almost lost my mind. Come on. <laughs> now, right, do you believe that? You believe somebody scare you to death. I'm talking about you just... <gasps> <laughs> what happened to them? They scared them to death. <laughs> you believe this stuff? But why is it that it comes out? Because Satan has tricked people to speak more. Now, once again, you are designed to speak what you believe. You're never designed to speak what you really don't believe, but he's the master deceiver and he's tricked folks. And so here's another one. Man, I just, I just love you to death. Don't love me to death. I don't need nobody loving me to death. Amen. Amen. Have you guys heard that? People speaking about people they love and man, my head, my back, Oh, somebody, my toe, my arm is what? Killing me. Is it? But, like, do you really believe that? I mean, has anybody caught a revelation of a slow death? When they said, they said, you know, my back is killing me. I feel my air going out. I better say goodbye. But you really don't believe that. Well, why do you say it? Because Satan is the master deceiver. And he wants to waste all your time speaking what you don't really believe. And you're actually comfortable speaking what you don't really believe. But when it comes to the stuff that you really want and you should be believing God for, now you're oh, gun shy. I don't know if I can say that. Well, you just said, I'm dying to go. Why don't you just flip it? Amen? Come on, because some of those people that come up to you and you talk to them, and, and um, you know, they be talking about, they say, how, how was your weekend? Man, I was sick as a dog. They didn't ask you if it was okay for them to say that to you. Some of y'all start getting bold. Sick as a dog. You ought to start. Ruff, 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 ruff. Matter of fact, is that a tail? I, I thought I saw a tail on you when you came in here. <laughs> Amen. There's people just, you know, saying this stuff, man. I just, you know, I, I just, I just can't stand. You know what that means? You have no patience. You can't, you know, people are all under your skin. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. We're well, gonna have to wait. That's right. mm, so what you gonna do when you said you can't? Be tearing up everything, just pulling out your hair. I just, ah, ah this is taking too long. Ah, ah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. But what? Who told you to say that stuff? The enemy. Why? Because he wants you to speak more what you don't believe. Y'all with me? Versus what you do believe. And that's 
what's going on. And then people get frustrated. I remember this back in the day. You, you about to get on my last nerve. <laughs> so, like, if we caught a flashback, man, we could have been, you know, mom and them could have been close to going postal. <laughs> they said that they could have been about to go postal on all of us. If they really meant that. You know what I mean? But if we can just start to realize this and say, I don't, I don't really believe any of that. So I'm going to start saying what I believe. So speak what you believe. Look at your name and say, speak what you believe. Speak what you believe. Mark 11, 23. We'll get ready to close in a minute. Mark 11, 23. You're going to have to get the doubt out. God's already given you the power. He's given you the ability. You can do this thing. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not, what? So if you tell the mountain to get out, that means anything, anything that's troubling, you can speak to it and tell it to get out, just like Jesus <clears throat> spoke to the fig tree. There was no fruit, and so Jesus spoke over and said, basically, you shall not bear fruit anymore again. And, and the tree died up, and the disciples came along the next day, and they said, Master, the tree you spoke to is dead. And he's, but you thought, you was with me when I spoke to it. But see, now, this is the image that we're created in. We're, the, we're in this thing where we're created in an image to where we could speak to a trial, a situation, an obstacle, and command it to bow, and then go over to God, go to sleep, and wake up the next morning and expect it already fixed. Why is it fixed? Because I said so. Amen? Not just in shock and awe when God does something. He's going to start, the stuff you start speaking is going to start showing up, and you'll get used to it, but you got to get the doubt out. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which who says? Hmm? Should believe what God said or what who said? What you said. So you got to believe what came out of your mouth. If you believe what you said, then those things which he said shall come what? To pass and he shall what? Is this true? I mean, sometimes we just got to, like, figure it out. Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if this whole Bible stuff is true. We should say it is true. It's the infallible word of God. But the question is, do you believe it? Last scripture, 2 Corinthians. See, and before you say, man, pastor gave us so many scriptures. What else you want? Y'all already know I can't sing. <laughs> a lot of these pastors get up there singing. I just, uh, I can't do all that. All I got is word, man. That's it. Amen? So I believe you ought to get a lot. And you know why I, give, I like to give you a lot of scriptures? Because you might not get them all. So some of y'all might start being obedient, like I told y'all in years past, to listen to it again. We used to have a bunch of obedient people. They listen to these sermons more than once. Amen? We used to give out them CDs, man, and people listen to them again. Now they say, you listen to it again? Ah, oh, well, you know. They know all oh, well, you know. This transforming power right here. This stuff will change your life. Yes. Amen? Amen? 2 Corinthians 1.20. Amplify. Let's close on this one. See what happens when you guys do a short meet and greet? Man, I get to preach a long time, and we get out before 12. For as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes answer. Learn about the promises. God's promised you all these things, and you're going to get that yes answer in him, in Jesus. So if you be in Jesus, come on, you're going to get God's yes. For this reason, we also utter the amen, so be it, to God through him in his person and by his agency to the glory of God. So what this means is I have Jesus in me. So as a result of me connecting and having Jesus come alive in me, 
then I am expecting all of the promises of God to show up in my life. And I believe this. I believe this. Come on. Just tell yourself, say, I believe this stuff. So if we believe it by the time we start speaking it. Amen. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Come on. Clap for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us, being here with us this morning. Thank you for releasing your word in this house. I thank you that we are transformed by your truth. We're sanctified and set apart by the truth. And there's a victory that you have for us. We're going to walk through those open doors because we believe all of your promises. We thank you and we praise you. Maybe you're in this place where every head is bowed or eyes are closed or maybe you're at home and you don't know Jesus as Lord. We want you to know right now today is the day of salvation. Just receive him into your heart and let him do the rest. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message would know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Come on, clap for Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. I'm going to bring Brother Eric up here in a moment, but I want you to tell three people I believe it, and now I'm going to start speaking it. Huh? Y'all on board? Anybody? Anybody committed to this? Come on, anybody? Say, I believe it, and now I'm going to start speaking it. Boy, I'm telling you, that's what's going to make all the difference in your life. Brother Eric, come on, clap for Brother Eric as he comes up to close us out today. Amen. Amen. All right, powerful word this morning. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus one more time. He deserves our praise. Let's lift our hands toward heaven this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you for a powerful time this morning, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity to receive your word, Lord God. Bless these, your people that have come here to seek you diligently today, Lord God. Bless us and keep us as we go to our individual homes and bring us back at your appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen.